We are wanderers, explorers, travelers, roaming the earth field by field, moment by moment, seeking, searching, longing, desperately wanting those we encounter to know what we know, to experience what we've experienced, a life change so beautiful, a grace so sufficient, a mercy so unfathomable that we can't possibly keep it to ourselves. This is our mission. This is our purpose. To pursue the calling of Jesus to the ends of the earth. Will you answer that call? The call to wander? The call to search? The call to walk the field. Well, good morning, church family. This morning is an exciting, unique morning, as you can tell. Uh, it's going to look a little different. Guys, we have the awesome honor and privilege of commissioning a family, a, a couple this morning, that is going to the ends of the earth on the mission field. And so as we thought about what it would look like for us to have a service around that, uh, we decided that this would be an awesome opportunity as a church just to have a family talk time about missions, okay? And so I've asked two families to join us. This is Kyle and Lindsay Johnson. You guys welcome them. And, and they are here. They're local. They uh, live and work here. They're members of uh, First Baptist Bernie. And uh, we're going we're gonna to talk about uh, what it looks like to just live our lives on mission uh, while we work, play, and live right here uh, in Bernie. Um, and then afterwards, we're going to call up John and Catherine, and we're going to have a special time with them. We're going to hear about their story, uh, and then we're going to pray over them as a church. Let me read that passage again so we can have it in the forefront of our mind. In Matthew chapter 9, verse 35 through 38, says, Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogue, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, healing every disease and sickness. And when he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. And then he said to the disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. And so, uh, Kyle and, and Lindsay, you guys are here, and uh, we're having a conversation just so we can talk about what it looks like in, in your field here in Bernie uh, and in San Antonio where, where you work and just your regular movements of life. Uh, so a quick introduction. You guys have been married how long? 15 years. 15 years. Congratulations. You've been at First Baptist since uh, 2014. Uh, your kids, what are your kids' ages? So Noella is 10, Olson is 8, and then we have an 18-month-old, Reed. All right. So get your mind around that, a 10, an 8, and an 18-month-old as we talk about this. And Kyle, you work as an industrial engineer for Boeing, and Lindsay, you're a stay-at-home mom. So your hands are full. Now, uh, when, when we as a staff were, were thinking about people that were in the thick of life and uh, were so intentional about living your lives on mission, uh, you guys were... were first one of the ones that was mentioned. Uh, and, and so church family, what I want you to see is I want you to see both the Johnson's intentionality to live out their faith, but also I want you to see and realize that 
They're just like every one of us, okay? Um, So with that, you guys have served in a number of areas, foster care, taking it to the streets, uh, and now you guys are even teaching in the children's department. So your plate's been full. So uh, let me jump into it just with a couple of questions. Um, Let's start with foster care. So you guys... uh, uh, maybe a year or so plus ago, uh, served in foster care. How did you initially become interested uh, in fostering? Uh, so when we were trying to have kids, uh, we, were, we were struggling, and so we kind of started uh, kind of thinking about adoption, and um, for whatever reason, it was God's plan that he, he, he blessed us with the, with the three we have, but we still always felt somewhere in that, in that realm that we were being called to. And we were introduced to the foster community through uh, another member, uh, y'all know Rachel Russo, um, and her amazing story and her heart for adoption. And through that process, God just began to stir our hearts um, for what that looks like and the opportunities to uh, serve in the foster care community. Yeah, so in, in working through your own issues of fertility and that, God had kind of placed that on your heart. Now, Lindsay, why do you think that, that God gave you specifically a heart for foster care? Sure, um, so my parents were divorced uh, when I was a really little, and so I knew, I saw my mom um, cling to the church, cling to our family uh, for support, and I think it occurred to Kyle and I both that a lot of these families that end up in the system they don't have churches for support, they don't have their family for support, um, and their children maybe have never even heard about Jesus. And so we saw that as an opportunity to serve these parents um, that have their children in the system, and then also to serve the children and teach them about, about the gospel. Yeah. Now you guys had, uh, I think, one placed child in your home. About how long was that placement? Probably, it was only three months, I think. It was very short. Okay, so a short period of time, and yet, how would you say that you were blessed through that experience? Uh, I think we were connected, first of all, you know, just having H in our our house was a blessing in itself, and then uh, just getting connected with the whole foster care community, CPS workers, CASA workers, uh, et cetera. Um, But the, the biggest thing is this... The love we felt from our church community and our small group, uh, just quick, quick things like, you know, the day after H was placed in our house, you know, we come home and there's our front patio is just covered in Amazon boxes from people in the church, you know, sending us stuff. And uh, when he first came to our house, he came with a little bitty backpack, you know, and then when, when he was uh, leaving, a uh, whole SUV of stuff, and that was primarily the church community. And um, that's right. You guys did awesome, right? And, Amen. And I think the, the, the last thing on that is it's, it was so sweet. After the first time uh, he came to, to church here and he was so excited to come back. And for the rest of the time that he was with us, he referred to this as my church. Amen. My church. Amen. And he just felt so loved. It was awesome. awesome. That's, that's high praise for, for you, First Baptist. Great job. Awesome. All right, so let's talk for uh, a minute about taking it to the streets. And for those of you that don't know what taking it to the streets is, that is a, uh, a ministry that was started here at First Baptist Bernie in every Saturday evening in downtown San Antonio, okay? Uh, taking it to the streets, shares a meal with the homeless, distributes uh, items of need like clothing and other necessities uh, in order to build relationships, to pray with, to share the gospel with the homeless community in San Antonio. And uh, for more than a decade, every Saturday night, uh, they have a meal, come rain or shine. Okay, personally, uh, my family has gone down there and our kids loved it. In fact, uh, when we got in the car, uh, the reply was, we should do this every Saturday night, okay? Um, All right, so Johnson's, why homeless ministry, okay? Why would, as you're thinking about serving and getting involved, uh, why would you get your whole family involved in homeless ministry? So I lost touch with my dad when I went off to college and I didn't really hear from him for 15 years and it turns out he was homeless. And so it really gave Kyle and I a heart. Um, 
we realized, I knew how much my dad had struggled, and so I knew that, um, that there are a ton of people struggling, and taking it to the streets really ministers to those people. Yeah, and, and the first time I served at taking it to the streets, I met a man whose uh, uh, wife and kids were killed in a car accident, just an absolute tragedy. And it, it just hit home with me that, you know, we, we don't know their stories, and, but it doesn't matter what their story is. Jesus loves them where they are, and, and, and that's what we need to try to do as well. Yeah. And I think also, um, for a long time we prayed, um, since our children were little, our oldest kids, um, that we wanted them to have compassion for people. We wanted to, um, you know, have them want to serve other people, but we're just in a very comfortable culture. And I could tell pretty early on that it was easy to fall into just thinking about ourselves. And so we realized we had to be very intentional with that. And so we're constantly keeping our eyes out and praying about how we can be more intentional to teach them that. I love it. I love it. That is, if, if we want our kids to be compassionate, if you want your grandkids to be compassionate, then be intentional, right, about living out exactly what Jesus teaches us to do. Uh, now, on, on top of this, of serving in foster care and being intentional about looking for service opportunities, uh, you guys have now ended up teaching in the children's department. How did that happen? I'm kind of laughing because it was an accident. Um, <laughs> we, uh, the church had called for, uh, I think it was 2022, the summer of 2022, called for volunteers. We were shorthanded. And, um, and so I, I told Kyle after that service, I think we're supposed to help. And maybe we can just be a substitute teacher. Um, and so pretty quickly, our small group told us, no, you're, you're the actual teachers for second grade. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. And Kyle, how have you been blessed by serving in the children's department? You know, I, I think maybe when Lindsay said that, I think we're supposed to be, I, I kind of was... I don't know, okay, I kind of uh, went along, but it's been such a blessing. Um, it's an honor to pour, get the opportunity to pour truth into these children, and then uh, another thing that's cool about it is, you know, I get, we get, it's another way to get connected with across the church, the, 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 not just the kids that are in our class, but their, their parents, and, um, and just, uh, it's, it's amazing just to get to kind of, um, uh, you know, grow with them, because, you know, we taught, we have probably have the most rowdy, energetic class, and... Um, you pride yourself on that, don't you? Yeah, a little bit, I, and I might be one to stir some of that up, <laughs> but um, we, we actually have, we graduated with them, we moved to third grade with them, and, um, you know, it's just so awesome to see their little hearts growing, and, and, and ours is too, as well. Awesome. Well, Johnsons, I think you guys are an incredible example of, of someone who's trying to live out their faith with intentionality, trying to be the hands and feet of Christ um, while you uh, just live normal lives, right? Working as an engineer, a stay-at-home mom. Um, and so church family, as, as we've walked through the book of Acts, um, it, it's, it's super important that we don't just think about uh, the uh, professional missionaries, that, that we also think about each of our callings, okay? And so, guys, let's just enter into a time of prayer right now where we focus on ourselves and we ask the Lord to, uh, to make us intentional with our field, with what God has placed right in front of us. Will you pray with me? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for uh, the opportunity that you can and do use us where we are, where we work, where we play, where we live. Um, I thank you for the Johnsons and their intentionality with, with serving, trying to be the hands and feet of Christ with intentionality um, to be able to, uh, to serve you. God, we pray as parents, as grandparents, as aunts and uncles, that you would uh, show us, continue to teach us uh, where we can get plugged in um, and how we can use our gifts and our talents with intentionality to serve those around us um, with your love. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. All right, you guys give the Johnsons a hand.
By the way, it's not easy getting up here, in case you don't know that. Uh, there's shiny, bright lights. It's a little hard to see you. Um, now, our next couple, this is their last Sunday to be here at First Baptist Bernie. And we have the awesome privilege of commissioning them to the mission field this morning, right? Just like Paul and Barnabas set aside. Uh, they felt the Spirit's call, and John and Catherine are, uh, they're going to leave and go to the ends of the earth. Now, if you are watching online, uh, you cannot see them, and that's done intentionally. The reason for that is they are going to uh, a part of Af Africa that is 99% Muslim, okay, and is hostile to Christians. And so for their safety and for the gospel work of the team when they get there, we aren't allowed to show them or use their last names. And so let me remind you, please no photos or social media posts about the matter. That, with that, uh, you guys welcome John and Catherine. <laughs> guys, thank you for joining me. Uh, what an awesome day, and a special day it is uh, in your lives. And uh, thank you for allowing us to share it uh, with you. Uh, let me just say what a privilege it is, uh, not only to be your pastor, uh, but to be a part of a church uh, and to, to have a small part in this journey of you guys being obedient to answer the call and to go um, with your little ones uh, around the world to an unreached people group, to a culture that is overwhelmingly Muslim and, and do not know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Um, so let me set the stage for our congregation that it hasn't always been this way, okay? John and Catherine, you guys have been married how long? 10 years, almost. 10 years, That's, that, was, that was not a trick question, but you passed, all right? <laughs> okay, and, and you have three kids, and what are their ages? Uh, so Tommy is eight, almost nine, and the Johnsons were actually his Sunday school teachers this last year. Yeah. And we just thank them so much that he had a wonderful year. Um, Benjamin is seven, and Millie is five. All right, and you guys moved to Bernie eight years ago because John found stable work as an engineer, okay? Um, and, and so, John, you were working as an engineer, and Catherine, you were a stay-at-home mom. So what happened in order to, for you to consider changing career path from pursuing the American dream to becoming full-time missionaries overseas? What happened? Yeah, there's a lot to that story, certainly. One thing, you shared this passage from Matthew today, and Jesus seeing compassion on people. Well, I think we realized the riches that we have been entrusted to our whole lives in terms of scripture from our childhood uh, solid Christian families raising us up well, blessing us through the church, a wonderful, thriving church here that we've been part of, immensely blessed with the truth of Scripture, and to recognize so many people in the world lacking anyone to share that with them, hmm. and just a longing to be useful kingdom workers, take what God's given us, the skills we do have, and go be part of the work He's doing. Yeah. We have several, um, in both of our heritages, uh, faith heritages, we have missionaries in our, in our background, and I have great-great-grandparents buried in what is now Zimbabwe, and I have, um, in each generation of my family, some, there have been missionaries, and now we belong to a generation of cousins. I have so many cousins who are also um, missionaries, and so um, in, in my family, it is a part of uh, the culture, and it has... It, um, and the, the, the work of being a missionary is encouraged. And so, um, and I think that has allowed us the freedom to let go of things and maybe ideas of success and ideas of, um, of, of who you should be and what you should do. And I think that's encouraged us to, be, to have the freedom to take our careers as an engineer, as a teacher, and to be able to use that overseas for God's kingdom. Yeah, absolutely. Amen. All right. Now, you guys uh, spent the last two years, right before this most recent stint, in northern Kenya with the Rendili people. Um, and that was an unreached people group uh, when you guys uh, first went, and you guys were developing and coaching leaders, assisting with Bible study. 
Uh, now, while you were there, your organization determined that the Rendili people um, had had the ability to reach themselves. So they were no longer unreached, they were now least reached, okay? Those are missionary categories. Um, and like Paul in Romans 15, 20, um, you, you, Paul wrote, he says, it has always been my ambition to preach the gospel where Christ is not known. The two of you have felt called to uh, unreached people groups. So we're gonna circle back around to that here in a second. But what was your favorite story from those two years in northern Kenya with the Rendili people? Sure, there are many. I'll share one. What I will say, I think God used us at a time of transition in that church. So it was wonderful to see that church, the Rendili church, going forward, planting a handful, three churches in that short time we were there in three years, a thriving church. It's just amazing to be part of that on the front lines, being a little bit useful in what God is doing. Well, one story of many um, that I got to be part of, there was a youth camp at the church uh, one April, a couple years back now. It's Time's flying. And during this camp, there was an accident where a young man um, wrecked his motorcycle, these little motorcycles that are so common in East Africa, those who have been there know. And he went over a rock and flipped end over end, a bad wreck. He had a compound fracture of the leg, a bad fracture in his arm, seriously hurt out in the desert where a good hospital is two hours away, but that one amputates. Anyway, I got to be part of helping bring him to the clinic. But the bigger, more important part of the story is he's a young man who had been a believer and then got, was a believer, but was convinced to join the Muslims at a local mosque. Carry on. And, and the mamas that I discipled, they, after he had this accident, he was off in a village, they said, Catherine, we have to go pray with him. And would you take us to him? And so, um, and often I did that because we had a truck. And so we, um, a bunch of mamas who knew this boy, who knew that he was a Christian, but had recently turned Muslim, um, they all got in the car with me and we went out into the desert and went to, found his house and sat and prayed with him. And I watched as a mama, uh, one of my dearest friends fussed at him and said, I know who you are and I know you're a Christian and, and God has saved your life. He's, he's, he, he's going to do something with you. Mm. And, um, and then to this day, um, as far as we know, that man is a be believer. And so um, just, to, um, just to see the church, you know, that we, we facilitated, you know, if you heard the story, we drove the car, but that, that's what we did. And just to see that church love and, and bring this young man back. Uh, it was wonderful to see. Amen. That's awesome. Do you guys ever regret the shift from professional life in America to fundraising and missions overseas? It's a good question. And to be honest and real, there are hard things. That's the honest truth of the matter, right? Um, God is faithful. I want to be clear on that. And we have seen his faithfulness in our life the past few years. So we do know deep down the certainty and joy that he will work things out for our good. He will use us. But there are these hard moments, and that's a real part of following him in ministry here or abroad, wherever it is. Exactly. Even in ministry here, this last year we have spent, you know, just getting reconnected with the church. And I have been able to meet random people at Chick-fil-A and then invite them to parks and visit and, and even, even pursue people here. And, and no matter what, even, even when you're living here, to, to situate yourself to reach people here in Bernie takes a certain amount of um, being inconvenienced, at giving yeah. up certain things, laying down your life. It costs you something. And, um, and I always think of this verse from Philippians 3, 8. I count all things to be lost in view of their surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them but rubbish in order that I may gain Christ. And so I might look silly trying to pursue a mama in Chick-fil-A, hoping that maybe she and her little ones would want a play date with me, but that, that's part of counting the cost, and, mm -hmm. and we, both, we do that both here and abroad. That's right, that's right, amen. <laughs> so John and Catherine, what is next for you guys? So this week, on Thursday actually, it's coming up quickly, we fly to North Africa and begin to set up a new home, which is not yet rented, we have to find that. Uh, begin language school a week later. 
uh, begin seeking out community to make friends and relationships, which will be chances down the road to witness. And so John is an engineer, and he technically, um, we can't go there and get a visa as, a, as missionaries like we could in Kenya. And so he will be in the business of setting up some kind of business um, so that we can have a visa to be there, to have a legitimate reason to be there in the country. How long do you think it'll take you to learn the language? So <laughs> I don't know if we'll ever learn. We will keep learning for okay. many years. But there is a good program at a school in there in <laughs> where it's 1,500 hours, so a year and a half. 20 hours a week, we'll be in class studying, and then we'll continue on learning verses, useful things. And the language is Arabic, a form of Arabic, yeah. All right, are you guys afraid? You know, it's, it's interesting. You know, I think that fear, you know, all emotions, uh, we feel them because God feels them. And, uh, but he feels them perfectly and with perfect truth in his mind at all times and then expresses them perfectly. Hmm. Whereas we, we don't, but we, you know, fear can lead us to the Lord and to trust him. And so in a, in a macro sense, you know, we trust God and we trust in his sovereignty. In a micro sense, we still have our own hopes for the future and our anxieties and um, little things that we deal with, but um, but our hope and trust is in the Lord, and um, and I and we we can we know He's good and we know He will take care of us. So that's my honest answer. Is yeah. yes to some certain extent, but we He's gone before us and we've seen Him provide before, and we know we know we can trust Him. Yeah. Exactly. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, so as you go, what is your greatest hope? What do you dream that God would do with your lives, allow you to be a part of? Yeah, um, our greatest hope is to see a thriving church in there, a deep, rich one. The same blessings I talked about that we feel we've been given, the depth of scripture and the knowledge and the relationship with God, where we live in the joy of him, longing to see deep churches like that for our role, hoping to be a useful part in that as God does that, that he will use us as workers. Yeah, yeah just, I echo the same things. I think primarily um, women who are um, deeply um, mature and and um, and rich with God's word, not the knowledge of His word, and that it's multiplying out in these underground churches, and that um, that uh, and that there won't be fear, and that people would turn to Christ. Yeah, it's the hope of the gospel, right? Yeah. All right. So, how can we as a church support you? Yes, you know God is faithful, like I said. And he does that in large part through people. This church has already immensely blessed us through the years. I can't even begin hardly to name the number of people who have walked with us on this journey so far. And so part of that is continuing on. Um, read our newsletters and pray. It is so important, the prayers. And we put a verse on our card here, Colossians 4, 2 through 3, from Paul. Continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. At the same time, pray also for us that God may open to us a door for the word to declare the mystery of Christ. It's praying for doors open that we can visit with people, hearts open, where there's not anger, even though there are many things that can cause anger, many quick answers, but praying for open hearts that God can use us to share his word and that it can take root and hearts can change and turn towards him. So in, in part of your answer, of what you said there, and just pastorally, I'm imagining how much it must mean to you to get on the other side of the world, but to know uh, that we as a church family are still intent and focused and supporting and praying and reading and wanting, wanting weekly updates, uh, like genuinely invested and still care, all right? So you heard that, church family. That's how we can continue to support them, all right? Now, with that, we would like to know how we can specifically pray. 
Okay, specifically, um, our unit leaders recently told us, oh, by the way, if you don't have people praying for housing, you should probably get them to start praying. Okay. So here I go. Um, so on the back of our prayer card, I have a picture of a door. And, and so if you maybe just look at this side from now on and just say door, house, door, house, and just start praying for a house for our family. And um, we would love, I mean, let's go specific. We would love four bedrooms and we would love a little patio. It's okay if it's cement for the children. And I, God lets us ask for small things and I'm asking for that. So that one's very pressing in the next few weeks, but also asking for God's leading in that, that it's in the right neighborhood where he wants us mm -hmm. for his purposes. I imagine as parents, you probably also desire uh, prayers for your children as they transition. Yes, we would just love if you could pray for them that they would become very attached to their new country and to the new people and the new language. And language acquisition is going to be probably the biggest thing that makes them feel more at home and safe in a, a new culture. And so um, they will be going to language school with us. And so if you can just pray that um, that they would catch on to the language and would would um, would would basically fall in love with their new home. Yeah, awesome, awesome. You guys have any closing comments? So incredibly thankful for this family. It has been a, sorry, church family, it has been a joy to be here this past year, each Sunday of worshiping, and uh, we hold that dearly. So every time we get a note from back home, it's a huge encouragement to each of us. And sometimes we get actually pestered when we are poor communicators a few people here pester us to communicate and it's <laughs> communicate better yeah yes and More. that's okay that's good we love that and our organization actually often asks us you need to tell your church this and tell them to do this and maybe they can do and and we're like they're already doing it they're already doing it awesome and so we're just very thankful for for all of you for each one of you and um, for how you've loved our children and been a part of our lives and welcomed us home and now sending us off. Appreciate that. Absolutely. Well, church family, at this time, we're going to have the awesome honor and privilege of, of praying over them. Um, and so John and Catherine have an adv advocacy team. That's a hard word to say. I've been practicing all week and still messed it up. Advocacy team, if you guys would please make your way up on stage, okay? Um, uh, deacons, you were informed uh, that if you would please come and line up at the front of the stage. Okay, and then church family, I'm just going to ask for you to stand, okay? You can stand and extend out your arms. As we pray for John and Catherine and for their sweet three children. And Pastor Chad's going to lead us. Let's pray. Father, we are so thankful for the way that you moved. Yes. We're thankful for this family. We pray, God, that you would put your hands on them. That you would bless them and their children. And that, God, you would go with them from the moment they walk off the stage. We pray, God, that you would be powerful in life and in heart, that you, you would guide their deeds these coming days, Father, that you would give them favor with officials in the government, God, that approve visas, that you would give them favor as they start businesses, God, as you give them favor as they speak life into people who are far from you. Yes, God. God, we pray that you would indeed open doors and open hearts so that their labor would be powerful for your kingdom. We pray, God, that you would care for them well. You would protect them as they go. Father, we pray that you would be with us as a church, that we would love them and care for them well in these coming days. Lord, it is for your kingdom, and it's for your glory. And we pray, God, that you would be honored and blessed by their sacrifice, by their effort, by their time, but, God, mostly by their love for you. We pray, God, that you would be honored among us, and that, God, you would call many more from these doors to go and share your, your love, your life with those around us. Here locally, like the Johnsons, 
and God, to the very ends of the earth, like this wonderful family. We thank you, God, for all that you are. Be with us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, church family, the praise team's going to come up and lead us in a final song. Um, For your information, uh, John and Catherine are going to be having a reception immediately following the second service in uh, in what we call the hub. It's the youth building um, uh, that way. That's all I know how to tell you at that point. It's it's connected. It's that way. There'll be a group of people. They will be sharing Uh, We'll have kind of light food to tide you over. It's not like an entire meal. It's light food to tide you over um, so that you can hear even more detail and so that you can connect with them. Maybe you want to uh, be able to shake their hands or connect with them personally, okay? Um, But church family, now is a time for us to respond, right? We've been walking through the book of Acts. We've been charged and encouraged. And now I pray this morning that just by seeing... Uh, Two ordinary and yet incredible families that are living out their faith for the gospel um, encourages you this morning uh, to take inventory and to just surrender again to the Lord. You may be here this morning and you may be checking out this Christianity. You may not be settled, okay? You may have questions. You are invited to come and to hear and to respond to the good news of Jesus, right? Why would we go to the ends of the earth? Friend, it is because of the love of Jesus, because he saves and because he changes, because he is, he is the greatest love that you could ever know. So we will have ministers down here at the front who would love to pray with you, who would love to uh, answer any questions that you have. But church family, let us sing in triumph and in joy this morning in Jesus' name.